once again, good afternoon, Bethany, and of course, to all our viewers na nanonood po ngayon, I would like to say thank you for supporting the ministry of Bethany, uh, and of course, yung pong deep and wide, and uh, napaka sarap magpuri sa Panginoon, amen, hallelujah, and today we are landing our series. Sino dito maraming natutunan sa ating series, and uh, that we, we talked about prayer, amen, sino dito ang mas... Uh, gumanda ang kanyang pakikipag-usap sa Panginoon. Taas kamay, right? Para makita ni Lord. <laughs> and of course, ang ganda na, alam nyo, uh, we had our prayer pa- and fasting. Sino dito, by the way, nag-fasting? Alright, sinunod yung one meal niya or maybe one coffee lang kasi dati talagang caffeine injection ang tirada mo. Pero ngayon, one coffee lang ako, pastor. Diba? Pero isang jug, alright? So, uh, hallelujah, because we are landing this series and uh, God is so good sa buhay natin dahil mas lumalim tayo sa pananalangin, mas lumalim tayo sa Kanyang salita, at dahil lumalim tayo sa Kanyang salita, mas naging excited tayo everyday na mabuhay para sa Kanya. Amen? If we know the reason, if we know the purpose of our life, then we will be excited every day. Hallelujah. And by the way, uh, before we dive into the Word, binulungan ako kanina ng ating ad hoc uh, director, si Kuya Gerald, we would, like you, we would like you to know na ang service po natin ay nag start ng 1 p.m. Kaya ini-invite po namin at ini-encourage po natin ang bawat isa na maganda, prior 1 p.m. ay nandito na po tayo. Amen? Kasi ang mga taong excited kay Lord ay hindi na late Amen? Kundi baka tawagin tayo ni Jups, alright? So, uh, maganda sa atin dito ay hindi po nalilate dahil ang mga Krisyano ay excited na magpuri sa ating Panginoon, alright? At uh, we are encouraging you na sana po wag tayong malate dahil namimiss natin. Marami tayong namimiss, especially yung mga opening uh, hindi naman yung mga opening spills or whatever. Pero maganda maumpisan natin. Para tayong nanood ng isang series, tapos nag-start ka sa chapter 3 agad. ba? So, hindi natin naintindihan, bakit, bakit sumisigaw sila? At pala, may nangyari na. So, maganda, nandito na tayo ng maaga. Amen? Sabi mo sa katabi mo, Amen. amen. Alright. <laughs> Parang hindi kayo believe. Alright. Uh, maganda sa atin dito, uh, tayong lahat ay natututo na manalangin. And when we're talking about prayer, kasi for the last six weeks, pinag-usapan po natin ang pananalangin. At ang pananalangin po, for those of you who are coming uh, for the first time and joining us for the first time, ang, ang pakikipag-usap po sa Panginoon, ang ibig sabihin nito ay pakikipag-close sa Panginoon. Every time we talk with our God, every time na tayo po ay pray ang relasyon po natin ay lumalalim sa Panginoon. At kapag malalim ang ang, ang pagkakilanla natin sa Panginoon, ang maganda dito, it develops our intimate personal relationship with God. Amen. And not just that, prayer shows our dependence to God. Kapag tayo'y nagpe-pray, parang sinasabi mo na, Lord, hindi ko kaya mag-isa, kaya ako'y nananalangin. Pumupunta tayo kay Mayor kasi hindi natin kaya yung isang bagay kapag may babayaran na, di ba? Or sa mga politiko or sa mga magulang natin, at sinasabi natin, Nay, tay, hindi ko na kayang bayaran itong tuition ko dahil malit lang sinasawad ko dahil ako'y uh, 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 working student. So, I need your provision. I need your support. So, it's a sign of dependence kapag tayo nananalangin sa Panginoon. Lord, hindi ko na po kaya itong nararamdaman ko ngayon. Medyo mabigat na, that's why I'm offering it to you, I'm surrendering it to you, and I believe, Lord, kung ano yung will mo, yun po ang mangyayari. Amen? It's a sign of our dependence to God. Ang tao hindi nananalangin ay hindi kailangan ng Diyos. Bakit? Dahil ang tao nananalangin ay kaya na daw niya ang sarili niya, which is, we cannot. Hindi lahat ng oras ay malakas tayo. We need somebody who is powerful, who is almighty, who is who is uh who is all sufficient and that is our God. Now, as we open this message, alam ko sa inyo dito, pumupunta kayo sa mga sa mga carnival or sa mga carnaval. Sino dito nakasakay na ng Reda or yung Space Shuttle or Space Shuttle na lang? Sino dito nakabunta ng EK? Di ba? Di ba pag sumasakay kayo ng EK, tawang-tawa kayo. 
Or maybe yung, ano yung favorite na yung sinasakyan sa EK? Horror train? <laughs> May horror train ba doon? Or maybe, ano, 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 space shuttle? Di ba, ang pinakakasad kapag sumasakay tayo ng isang, ng isang, ano man tawag sa sinasakyan na yun? Sa parang rides, that's right, rides. Ang pinakakakalungkot kapag yung patapos na yung rides. Ay, tagal na. Di ba, tagalan nyo pa. Di ba, isang araw ka nang umiikot-ikot doon. No? Parang ganun yung prayer natin, di ba? Alam, isa pa, kuya, isa pa, isa pa. Wala naman susunod eh. Or maybe, sa, sa alam nyo, sa, sa, yung sa Ferris wheel, di ba, pag sumasakay tayo, alam, bilis naman, sayang naman yung 50 pesos ko. Dapat, matagal. Tagalan nyo pa, kuya, isa pa. Sige na, wala naman susunod. Please, please, please. Ang, ang, ang gusto natin lagi, parang tumatagal ng isang bagay. And one of our prayers in life, is to prolong yung isang buhay. At weird sa isang tao, kapag ang pinagpe-pray niya ay hindi yung buhay, kundi yung bagay. Meron ba dito nagpe-pray ng isang bagay? Lord, I'm calling the El Elyon, El Shaddai, Yahweh, Jehovah, patagalin niyo pong buhay ng aking sapatos. Meron ba ganon? When you're praying, you're praying for alive people. Or maybe you're praying for a living thing. Pwede pa yung pusa, eh, Lord. Ang prayer ko talaga, pahabayin ni Lord yung buhay ni Ino. Kasi, Lord, mag-isa ko na nga lang sa bahay. Hindi niya pa patatagalin. Pwede niyo siyang kunin pag binigyan niyo ng kapalit. <laughs> so, we are praying for, for, for tao na pahabayin yung buhay. Diba? Meron pa dito nagpe-pray na, Lord, please, pahabain niyo po yung uh, bracelet ko na wag siyang mawala. Wala nagpe-pray na ganun. Diba? What we're praying is buhay sa buhay. Kasi gusto natin ng isang bagay ay tumagal. Or ang isang tao, ang isang buhay ng isang tao ay tumagal. That's why I want to bring you in this subject. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, panghabang buhay. A prayer for long life. Sino dito gustong mahaba ang buhay? Taas ang kamay. Yan, baka hindi makita ni Lord, baka mamaya pumunta na kayo sa heaven. Gusto nyo ba yon? Ako ayoko. Di ba? Hindi pa tapos yung mansion ko doon. Marami pang itatayo si Lord, but we're talking about panghabang buhay. It's a prayer for long life. And I want to read Psalm chapter 91 verse 16. Two weeks ago, we talked about Psalm 91. It talks about the protection of God, that He's our refuge. He's our fortress. But it says here, with long life. Sabi nyo nga, with long life. Tapangan nyo mo nga, with long life. Oh, sige, short life na lang. I will satisfy Him and show Him my salvation. You know, in this chapter, chapter 16, or oh, chapter 91 of Psalm, eh, ang verse 16, ito yung pinaka, I think, pinakamahalagang verse sa buong chapter. If you are doubting God na gusto ka niya magkaroon ng mahabang buhay, this is your verse. Ito yung pangahawakan natin panalangin. You said in your word, Psalm 91, verse 16, Lord, with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. That's why today, as we, as we land this series, Lord, pinangahawakan ko, nabibigyan mo ako ng magandang uh, ng health. Lord, bibigyan mo ako ng kagalingan. Bibigyan mo ako ng long life. And Lord, you will provide me strength sa buhay ko because I'm going to hold on to your promise with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. So this is the, I think, the most important verse in this chapter because it talks about health, it talks about long life, it talks about prospered life, it talks about wholeness. Alam nyo, lahat naman po tayo, we are longing na mabuhay ng mahaba. Amen. Meron ba dito nagpe-pray na, Lord, idol ko kasi si Jesus eh. Kahit hanggang 33 lang. Meron bang ganun? No, Lord, gusto ko humaba ang buhay ko. Kahit Lord, isang century. Isang libo yun, no? 100 yun, no? Para ma-receive ma, ma, ko yung 100,000 ng government. Pero hindi ka naman na makakain. But you know, one of my favorite pictures of long life 
is found in biblical character, Caleb. You know Caleb? Si Caleb, uh, 85 years old na when he was prophesying and when he was declaring yung pinangako sa kanya ng Panginoon 45 years ago. Ay totoong sabi niya, let me quote this in Joshua chapter 4 and verse 10 to 11. I am this day 85 years old as yet as I am strong this day as on that day that Moses sent me just as my strength was then so now is my strength for war. Both for going out and for coming in. Did you hear that? Caleb was 85 years old. Tanungin mo yung katabi mo, ilan taon ka na? 16. O bakit ayaw mo nang lumaban sa buhay? But parang wala ka ng pag-asa? 24 ka pa lang. Lord, kunin mo na ako. Ayoko na but look at Caleb. He was 85, pero nangahamon pa ng away. And the faith picture here of long life is not just in terms of quantity. Pinakita dito, Caleb was not just 85 years old. Hindi lang quantity ang naranasan niya, kundi quality. Because he was healthy and he was vigorous. Look at his strength. Unlike Methuselah, kailangan niyo ba si Methuselah? Methuselah, siya ang pinakamatandang nabuhay sa balat ng lupa, 969. Sino dito gusto mag-birthday ng hanggang 969? Ilan taon ka na? Bibili ka sa Gold Deluxe, oh. 969. Bibili ka ng candles. Sino gusto mong mabuhay ng 969? But here's the sad part. I search his notable uh, accomplishments. Alam niyo kung ang, ano ang lumabas kay Metuzela? Ang lumabas sa notable accomplish niya is, dalawang bagay lang, longevity at saka yung kanyang ancestral descendants. Ibig sabihin, nabuhay lang siya matagal, tapos namatay. Genesis 5.27, And all the days of Metuzela were 969 and he died. <laughs> Wala sinabi dito, and his life was full. I mean, sobrang dami niyang nagawa, na-accomplish, he built this, uh, he, he led this. Wala. He lived 969, and he died. Sino dito gusto mabuhay ng 100 years old, tapos namatay lang? At ang sasabihin lang sa'yo, ang anak mo ay si Lamek, Si Noah, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Yun lang ang map- matatandaan sa'yo. You know, we are asking for long life sa Panginoon because we want it, not because we want it, but because there is a purpose behind our request. Amen? Lord, pahabain niyo po ang aking buhay so that I can worship you, I can serve you, I can be part of the kingdom of God. Amen? Lahat tayo nagpe-pray Dapat may reason. Lord, pahabayin niyo po ang buhay ko. Para saan? Para mas marami kang anak? Or maybe mas malaki ang business mo? Or maybe mas marami kang ma-achieve na MA? Or maybe mas magaling ka or whatever? But we're praying and asking God for a long life not because we want it, but because there's, there's a purpose behind our request. And you know, because Caleb lives strong and remains strong, nangyari yung pinangako sa kanya ng Panginoon. Hindi lang siya malakas, kundi pinalakas pa ng Panginoon. Some theologians said, yung edad ni, ni Caleb was 85, pero alam nyo kung anong lakas niya? He was like 45. And, you know, ako sa aking paniniwala, pinatigil or tumigil yung biological clock ng kanyang buhay. And I believe he stopped aging. Bakit? Dahil meron siyang pinangahawakang pangako sa Panginoon. At gusto kong malaman ninyo na nakakabata kapag may pinangahawakan kang pangako sa Panginoon. Amen? At lalabas dyan dun sa screen. So, uh, maganda sa atin dito, <laughs> nakakabata 
kapag may pinanghahawakang pangako kay Lord. Sino dito may pinanghahawakang pangako kay Lord? Alam nyo, kapag may pinanghahawakang tayong pangako, di ba sa pelikula, hihintahin kita. Tapos after 40 years, nagkatuluyan sila. Parang walang nangyari. Bakit may pinanghahawakan silang pangako? Lord, I believe you're going to bless me. Lord, I believe that, that I'm praying for my family sa kanilang salvation. That will happen. Hindi natin namamalayan yung nangyayari sa paligid. And it's, it's like our, the, the time, the click, the, 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 the time clock ng buhay natin ay nag stop kasi meron tayong pinangahawakang pangako. Sabi dito sa Joshua chapter 14, verse 12, Now, therefore, sabi nyo nga, Now, therefore, Give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day, for you heard in that day how the Anakim were there, and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. Sabi dito, now therefore, sa Tagalog, o ngayon, o pues, Lord, 85 na ako, o pues, ibigay mo na yung pagpapala. Ito yung pinangako mo sa akin, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. Give me this mountain. So, he's not ready to pack up or slow down. He, was, he wanted to start a fight. 85 oh, makikipag-away. Lord, ibigay mo sa akin itong mountain na to at ready na po akong talunin itong mga anakim na ito. You know, anakims, ito yung mga giants. Ito yung mga anakites. Malalaki, matatangkad. Pero gusto niyang makipag-away. Lord, I don't care kung malalaki sila, but right now, even I'm 85, you gave me strength, you gave me life, you gave me health, and that's why right now, I'm ready to claim that blessing. Give it to me. Now, right, gusto kong tanungin ang, ang bawat isa dito. You're serving for a long time. You've been a Christian for a long time. Right now, what are you claiming sa season ng buhay mo ngayon? Naniniwala ako na ang Panginoon ay hindi lang tayo kahayaan na i-worship siya at paglingkuran siya. I believe ang pagpapala ay hindi lang tayo susundan, kundi tayo ay o overtake every time we long for His presence. Dahil sa Kanyang presence, merong pagpapala. Amen? Kaya ngayon, ang gagawin natin, hindi lang tayo, basta Lord, I want to serve you. After that, wala lang, gusto ko lang ma-bless. No, God will bless you, not just spiritually, but also physically, also financially. Again, hindi lang basta nagtatrash talk dito si Caleb nung sinabi niya itong bagay na to. Caleb did as he said. Sabi niya sa verse 13 and 14, and Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephne, as an inheritance. Hebron, therefore, became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephne, the Kenizzite, to this day, because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. Sino dito, by the way, ang nabibilib kay David? Nabilib kay David dahil teenager boy, tinalo si Goliath. Alam mo mas nabibilib din ako dito kay Caleb eh. Balik rin natin, si David, bata, si Caleb, sobrang tanda. Pero he wanted to defeat these giants because God promised him this blessing. Now, gusto niyang gawin ito, gusto niyang i-accomplish ito, not because of pride, but because he was zealous for the glory of the Lord. Amen? So ngayon, gusto ko kayong tanungin, Maybe tinatanong nyo, Pastor, tinatanong ko rin eh, ano ba ang sikreto for a long life? Ano ba ang sikreto para humaba ang buhay? Or maybe, kapag ako po ay binigyan na ng long life ng Panginoon, ano po ang gagawin ko sa buhay ko? Ayaw ko pong maging katulad ni Methuselah na mahaba lang ang buhay pero walang na-accomplish para sa kingdom mo. Dalawa ang tanong natin ngayon, what is the secret to long life, and what to do when God grant us a long life. So number one is this, the secret to long life is found in simply following the Lord. 
Sabi mo sa katabi mo, follow the Lord. Guys, if you're going to read the scripture in the Old Testament and the New Testament, it talks about obedience and believing. Obeying and believing. And here's the thing. Hindi ka maniniwa, hindi ka mag obey kapag hindi ka believe Tama? And when you believe, you will obey. Now, here's the thing. The, the root cause of obeying and believing is relationship. Kapag wala kang relasyon sa Panginoon, ang hirap sumunod. Kapag wala kang relasyon sa Holy Spirit, at parang hindi mo kilala ang Holy Spirit, parang hirap mag-serve sa Panginoon. Bakit? Because you don't know how to respect, you don't know how to revere God. Lord, bakit mo pinapagawa sa akin to? Hindi naman tayo close. But when you have a deep relationship with the Lord, Lord, whatever you say, whatever you ask, Lord, I will do it kasi meron tayong magandang relasyon. It all starts, it all started with what? Relationship. It starts with relationship. Lord, when, uh, naniniwala ko at susunod ako sa'yo kasi meron tayong relasyon. Subukan mo magpautos dyan sa tambay na nasa labas. Bro, punta nga kay pastor, patimpla mo ako ng kape. Sino ka? Why? Because you don't have a relationship. Isang bagay lang, kung bakit hindi tayo sumusunod at hindi tayo naniniwala ay dahil wala tayong ganun kalalim na relasyon sa Panginoon. Because if your relationship with God is deep, you will believe and you will obey. The root of obeying and believing is relationship. That's why Joshua 14, 14. Therefore, I want you to underline the word, Hebron became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite to this day. Because he fully, oh, he wholly followed the Lord, the God of Israel. Oh, by the way, Pastor, of all the cities, why Hebron? Kasi marami namang cities sa Bible eh. Bakit hindi Mount Ebal? Bakit hindi Mount Gerizim? Bakit hindi Mount Tabor, etc.? Bakit Hebron? You know, in Hebrew, Shebron, it means Shebron or Hebron means fellowship or association. The reason God gave Hebron to Caleb because Caleb Holy followed the Lord because of relationship. Kung makikita nyo dito, it says here, Shebron means fellowship or association. Hindi ba kayo nagtataka kung bakit intentionally binigay ang Hebron kay Caleb? And I believe there's a spiritual significance to this. And this speaks of intimacy, closeness, and connection with the Lord. Hey, son, I will give you this one. Hebron, bakit naniniwala ko na sinusunod mo ako and we are close? Guys, there is no formula to long life. The prayer of protection is not a mantra. Na pag sinabi natin na sabingit tayo ng kamatayan, Lord, Lord, uh, Psalm 91, 16, blah, 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 with long life, etc., etc. No, that's not a mantra. What we've been talking about throughout this series all point back to what? The importance of having an intimate relationship with God. Guys, why we're praying? Dahil ba makuha natin lahat ng mga requests na inihiling natin? No. Why we're praying? It's simply because we want to have that deeper relationship with Jesus. And don't forget that everything Caleb experienced was under the old covenant. And yung renewal ng kanyang youth, yung kanyang strength, ay binigay ng Panginoon under the old covenant. Now, I want, I want to transition in verse, uh, uh, Psalm 90 verse 10. I want to read this. Sabi dito, 70 years are given to us, some even live to 80. Sabi ni Moses, ang nagsulat nitong Psalm na to ay si Moses, sabi niya, ang tao daw ay nabubuhay lang between 70 to 80. Yan na yung pinaka-maximum ngayon. That's right. And But even the best years are filled with pain and trouble. Soon they disappear and we fly away. Now, I want you to get the context of this. Itong verse na ito ay ginagamit natin para sukatin kung ano yung lifespan natin. 
Sabi ni Moses, tumatagal daw ang buhay ng isang tao between 70 years old hanggang 80 years old. Now, I want you to get another idea of this verse. During this time, sinulat ito ni Moses during their wandering sa disyerto. Sinulat niya, sinulat niya ito, uh, kami po ay naghihirap, kami po ay uh, may sakit dito at kami po ay hirap na hirap na dito sa disyerto at wala na kami ganong uh, uh, feeling namin, wala na kami pag -asa. Look at this. During the nasa wilderness sila and wilderness signifies uh, drought and signifies parang kulang but praise be to God by provision doon dahil may mana at may mga quail eggs silang kinakain. But when Moses wrote this, Sabi niya, Lord, 70 to 80. And here's the thing. This was written under the old covenant during sa kahirapan nila sa wilderness. But here's the thing. Naniniwala ako dahil tayo ngayon ay nasa new covenant na, tayo ay mas makaka-experience ng mas magandang bagay more than what Caleb experienced. If he experienced 85 Maybe we're going to experience more than that. Maybe not physically, but spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. Kasi sabi dito sa Bible, Hebrews 6, 8, 6, But as it is, Christ has obtained a ministry that is much more excellent than the oldest covenant he mediates his better since it is enacted on better promises. Naniniwala ba kayo na ngayon tayo nasa new covenant ay may mas magandang pangako ang Panginoon sa inyo? Amen? Kung sila ay nakaranas ng Hebron, tayo ay makakaranas ng mas maraming Hebron. Kung sila ay nakaranas ng mahabang buhay, tayo rin ay naka, makakaranas ng mas mahabang buhay dahil sa ginawa ng Panginoon. Why, Pastor? Because Christ became the mediator of a better covenant. During their time kay Moses, look at this. Sa time ni Moses, ang tawag doon ay Mosaic Covenant. Pag sinabi natin Mosaic Covenant, kailangan mong sumunod para pagpalain kita. Pero ngayon, ang maganda, nasa Jesai Covenant tayo. Nasa Jesus Covenant tayo. Bakit? Kung aning ginawa ng Panginoon sa krus ng Kalbaryo, that He was pierced, He bore our sins, at ibinitin ang mga sumpa sa punong kahoy, ang Panginoon ay nabuhay ng maikli para tayo mabuhay ng maaba. Ang Panginoon ay ipinako at tinalikuran ng Ama para tayo harapin ng, panga, uh, ng Ama. At nung sinabi ng Panginoon, Ilay, Ilay, Lama sa Bakani, God, God, why you don't forsaken me? And right now, we have the right to tell to our Father, 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 why thou you bless me so much? Dahil sa ginawa ng Panginoong Yesus. In the Old Testament, walang Holy Spirit, by the way. But right now, when Jesus said in chapter 14 of John, sabi niya, papangako ko sa inyo ang isang helper, ang isang comforter, and that is the Holy Spirit. That's why right now, katabi ninyo, hindi niyo lang ba katabi ang Panginoon, kundi nasa inyo ang Panginoon. That he be, sabi ng Panginoon, if you abide in me, I in you. This is the best thing about Christianity. Maybe you're asking, paano nagkasya ang Diyos na malaki sa akin na maliit? That's the best thing. It means there is someone na sobrang laki sa buhay mo that even your problems will be intimidated. God, I have big problems, but don't forget that your God is bigger than anything else that He God, Lord, whatever na, na, na lahat ng, ng iniisip at ginagawa ko na tingin ko malaki, Lord, sa paningin mo, malit lang dahil sobrang laki mo. God, you're inside of me, you're dwelling in me, you live in me, and you are with me forever. And I believe, God, whatever, whatever, I ask in your name for your glory, for your will, it will be given. That's why, nakakapagtaka sa isang kristyano na natatakot, lumakad, lumakad sa isang valley or sa isang lugar or sa isang sitwasyon, sa isang suffering, 
na nakakalimutan na niya kasama niya ang Panginoon na pinakamalaki. Sobrang laki, sobrang almighty, sobrang sufficient. Wala nang iba kundi ang Panginoon. Amen? Pwede yung palakpakan natin ng Panginoon. So, my dear brothers and sisters, we are under new covenant. That's why I encourage you to aim high. Your satisfaction is the limit. Lord, parang hindi pa ako satisfied dito sa part na to, ah. I know you're going to bless me because you have a better promise for me that your excellent, your covenant, your new covenant is better than the old covenant. Lord, marami ng leaders ngayon, pero hindi pa kami, Lord, contento. Yung will mo, Panginoon, ay parami ng iyong mga leaders so that we will reach more youth. That your limit is your satisfaction. That you will be satisfied. Sino dito gusto masatisfy? The Bible said in, in verse 16, With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. That's why, be satisfied. Be satisfied. Sino dito gusto humaba ang buhay? Ako gusto ko humaba ang buhay ko. Pero hindi lang basta humaba ang buhay. Kundi, Lord, gusto ko rin naman masatisfy. Yeah. <laughs> Meron dito, hahaba ang buhay hanggang 85, pero hindi satisfied. Mahirap, walang makain, walang kaibigan, walang mga pamana, kundi pamana, sakit ng loob, utang. Gusto nyo ba yon? May nasasatisfy ba sa ganun? Yeah. Ang sarap mabuhay ng matagal kapag satisfied ka. Ang sarap matulog paggabi kapag nakain mo lahat ng gusto mong kainin sa buffet. Ang sarap matulog kapag gabi na kapag satisfied ka sa relasyon nyo ng mga magulang mo at ng jowa mo. Na hindi kayo tatagal ng 3 a.m. kaka-explain. I'm satisfied. 11 p.m. pa lang tulog ka na. Ang sarap kapag satisfied. Ang sarap matulog kapag alam mo yung trabaho mo ay secured. Hindi ako sisiraan ng boss ko dahil si Lord ang magpor... Ay, in fact, born again na siya, Pastor. Binorn again ko na siya. <laughs> Binorn again mo na, no? I mean, I prayed for her. Hindi na niya ako chinichismis. Dati talaga gossiper yan. You know, nag- judgment. Gossiper yan. Pero ngayon, okay na kami. It's so satisfying kapag may peace. It's so satisfying kapag may joy sa puso mo. It's so satisfying kapag may healing. It's so satisfying kapag meron ka ng mga bagay na pinag mo at sinagot ng Panginoon. I believe, pahinapahaba ng Panginoon ang buhay natin, hindi lang for the sake of pahabayan. Kundi, He wanted to prolong our life so that we will be satisfied ng mas matagal. The Bible said, uh, John 3.16, For God so loved the word that He gave His only begotten Son, and whosoever believes in Him shall not perish. Hindi lang spiritual, kundi physical. Kapag kasama natin ng Panginoon, hey, you will never perish. You will never, yes, di ka pupunta sa hell, but in life, you will be full of blessing physically. The favor of the Lord will shine upon you. The favor of the Lord will be experienced in your family, in your business, in your career. And so by that, you will be satisfied. Ang weird sa isang Kristiyano na sasabihin na, Lord, pabami ang buhay ko, pero kahit magdildil na lang ako ng kasin, basta hindi nagnanakaw, kahit cardboard lang ang bahay namin, tapos may gulong yung bubong namin, okay lang yun, basta ako nagsaserve sa iyo. If that is your mindset, you're actually rejecting God's will. Because the will of the Lord in your life, meron siyang platform ng pagpapala, ng mahabang buhay, ng katalinuhan, ng relasyon, ng magandang relasyon, and of course, to serve Him. It's, it's satisfying to know that we are not lacking. Pero punong-puno. 
when you know the blessing of the Lord in your life, Lord, grave. Have you ever experienced yung busog na busog ka? Ang sarap nito. Yung nagsisisi ka, bakit ka? Bakit ka ano? Bakit ka na busog? Yung una, gutom na gutom ka, yung nagsisisi ako, ba't di ako kumain kanya? Tapos nung kumain ka, nagsisisi ka? Gutom na, uh, busog na busog ka naman ngayon? Alam niyo kung bakit? The word satisfy, kung bakit sinabi yun, malalaman niyo bakit. The word satisfy here in Hebrew meaning sabah. Hindi yung saging, alright? Sabah. It means fill to satisfaction. Literally or figuratively, it means physically, emotionally, spiritually. Have enough. Have plenty of. Ito pinaka-weird. Bakit merong be weary of? Ibig sabihin ng be weary of, nakakapagod. Dahil minsan sa buhay natin, darating sa buhay natin, na mapapagod ka na, kakatanggap ng pagpapalan ng Panginoon. Because you are so plenty. You are so full of life. You are so full of spirit. Lord, pagod na ako. Puro naman ako tanggap. Bigay naman ako sa iba naman. That your life and you will tell to yourself, Lord, nakaka-stress na. Tatawagin mo yung katulong mo, ito yung sahod mo. Ala, kakasahod ko lang po last week. Hindi, tanggapin mo yan. You know, nakakapagod ang pagpapalan ng Panginoon. That's why, ang buluwagan natin dapat malaki. At ang stewardship and management natin dapat malaki. The word satisfy. I was wondering, Lord, bakit may weary of? Ang layo nun sa pagiging busog. Ang layo nun sa pagiging plenty. It's about sometimes, Lord, bakit hindi naman yung ibang pagpalain mo? Oh, sa ganda ng prayer mo, no? Kung ganun ang prayer natin, Mel, sabihin mo, pagpalain nyo rin po si Pastor Jomel, ako na lang lagi. O, kung gusto nyo naman, bigay nyo sa akin, bibigay ko sa kanya. <laughs> gusto ko yun. Gusto natin yun. But, you know, lahat ng pinagpapala ng Panginoon na babaliw, hindi nila alam kung saan dadalhin. Yun ay kung punong-puno ka ng buhay ng Panginoon. It's not about physical, but it's also spiritual. Di ba kapag punong-puno yung puso mo, anong ginagawa mo? Lord, punong-puno ako. Pwede ko bang ibigay sa iba itong words of wisdom? Lord, pwede bang ibigay ko itong acts of service sa iba? Because you cannot serve without an overflow. And because you are overflowing, you are serving. You cannot serve without an overflow. Lord, kulang nga ako, tapos maglilingkod pa ako. Lord, punuin mo muna ako, siksik, ligliga, tumaapaw, at walang sukat pagkalagyan para maibigay ko sa iba. You are loving other people because you are full of life and love from the Lord. That's why you want to be satisfied. So, go to God with long life. Hindi sinabi dito ng Panginoon na tinuldukan, okay, I'll give you long life, period. But sabi niya, I will satisfy you. Ang sarap mabuhay ng mahaba at satisfied. Ang hirap mabuhay, mahaba na nga, mahaba pa yung pagdurusa mo. Piman, agkakalding, kunana. Mahirap. Sino dito gusto mababa ang buhay hanggang 85? Pero 80, 85 years ka rin nasa Banig ng karamdaman. But the Lord said, with long life, I will satisfy you. Psalm 1611, I will show, you will show me the path of life. In your presence, in fullness of joy, in your right hand, there are pleasures forever. So you will show me path of life. It means God provides not just physical blessing, but wisdom, but peace, but direction, and wisdom in every decision in life. Kaya ang sarap pag nakay Lord eh. Pansin niyo ba yung mga, yung mga nakay Lord? Pag kinausap niyo si Bishop Saldi, ay grabe. Punong-puno. Kailangan nyo mag-take note. 
five minutes pa lang, may series na ako. O oh, sige, Siri. Kausapin mo sila, Doc? Punong-punong, sila ko eh, Gerald? Oh yan, no? di ba, Siri? <laughs> dali lang naman, dali lang, dali lang. Okay, I won't. Look at this. When you are in the presence of the Lord, punong-puno ka ng wisdom. Kaya pag may mga decision ka sa buhay, Lord, ire-replyan ko ba to? Gusto ko na siya talagang ano eh, awayin, papatulang ko na to eh. No. Siya nagpaparal sa'yo. Oy, tama Lord, tama. <laughs> Lord, gusto ko na talaga siyang sagutin. Wag, baka matanggal ka sa ministry. <laughs> Di ba? Parang, okay Lord, okay. Thank you for the wisdom and direction and thank you for the right decision. You will show me the right path or the path of life. Kasi ang buhay po, hindi lang spiritual. Kundi meron din physical. At sabi pa dito, in your presence is fullness, in fullness of joy. It means you have positive mindset. Peace and a, uh, a hopeful outlook in day-to-day life. Kung wala man tayong material na bagay, ang sarap masatisfy kapag contento ka. Wala ka mang sapatos ngayon. Wala ka mang kotse ngayon yet. Wala ka mang, wala ka mang degree ngayon yet. But, pignan mo sarili mo, you're satisfied. Bakit the Bible said in Psalm 23 verse 1, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall lack nothing. It, it, it talks about contentment. Lord, life is not just about material things. It's about also spiritual, mental, emotional and relational aspect ng buhay ko. And I believe when I have a great relationship with you, I will be satisfied. In His presence, the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. At ang maganda dito, your favorite, my favorite, in your right hand, there are pleasures forever. More. It talks about favor and provision in various aspects of life. Blessings in good health, blessings in physical life, and prosperous living, harmonious relationships, and future endeavors. Ang ganda. At ang maganda dito, it is forevermore panghabang buhay. The Bible said in Romans 11, 29, the gifts of the Lord are irrevocable. Kaya, mga kabataan, kung talagang yan, taong yan, ay para sa'yo, hindi mawawala yan. Kapag nawala yan, hindi yan ang kalooban ni Lord. Kasi ang regalo ng Panginoon ay hindi nawawala. At hindi binabawi. Because it says here, Masaya ka ngayon sa relationship mo kay Ate Carla. Oh, we'll see after two years. Kapag siya ay tumagal forevermore, siya yung kalooban. <laughs> Pero pag next year nawala yan, hindi yung kalooban. Ganun lang naman yun eh. Pag nawala, hindi. Pag nandyan, siya yun. <laughs> because the Bible said, your right hand, in your right hand, there are pleasures forever more. Hallelujah. Pwedeng palakpakan na ng Panginoon. I love preaching this. Psalm 37, 25, sabi ni David, ang ganda, I was young, and now I am old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken on their children begging bread. So walang mahirap na kristyano. Lahat pinagpapala spiritually, mentally, physically. Kaya mga kapatid, pag sinabi ng kaibigan mo, hindi ka nalalago, hindi ka magiging successful. No, I am the righteousness of God and therefore, I will not break, be, beg bread, Lord. David said, wala akong nakita, tumanda na ako. Wala akong nakita isang righteous na naghingi at nag, naging pulube at nanlimos ng pagkain, spiritual man o physical man. Actually, this is a literal verse. But I believe 
pwede natin gawin ito, spir- uh, tignan nito spiritually. Lord, sabi ng kaibigan ko, gagapang ako na parang ahas sa kahirapan. Dahil ako'y mawawalan ng peace at hindi na ako sasaya dahil ang mga magulang ko ay, 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 ay naghiwalay at maaga silang nagkamali. But Lord, I believe by Your grace at ginawa mo sa cross ng, kal- sa cross ng kalbaryo, tinanggal mo ang sumpa. That's why now I will not beg breads because the Spirit, the, 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 the living Word is in me, the Holy Spirit is in me, and I will enjoy it. I will never beg bread. At kapag masaya ka kay Kristo, it will manifest the joy of your salvation. So why number three, show your salvation. Isang verse lang tayo ngayon. Psalm 91.16, I'm about to end. With long life, I will satisfy Him and show Him my salvation. As I end, actually may point number four ako pero tapusin ko na dito. Psalm 91 ends with the power pack verse. Sabi ko sa inyo, pinakamalaga sa chapter nito, itong verse na ito. Remember two weeks ago yung pinag-usapan natin? 911 and verse 2? Kapag titignan natin to, can you show it please? In Psalm 91 one verse two. Pinakita dito yung apat na pangalan ng Dios. Sabi dito, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High, in the shadow of the Almighty, I will abide in the shadow of the Almighty, I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. So may apat na pangalan na binanggit dito. Una, si Mosai meaning, El Elyon, yung Almighty meaning Shaddai, and then yung Lord meaning Yahweh and Jehovah, and then yung God meaning Elohim. Now, this is so, this is, a, this is the revelation of the Lord. In Psalm 91, 16, with long life, I will satisfy Him and show Him my salvation. You know the word salvation? In Hebrew meaning Yeshua. Yeshua in Hebrew meaning salvation. The word Yeshua is the Hebrew name of our Lord Jesus. Now, isn't that beautiful? And this is what God was saying. With long life, I will satisfy Him to show Him my Yeshua. Because of what Jesus has done in your life, you're going to show your salvation to people. God, because of the protection, because of the love, because of the provision and the forgiveness, I am going to show the Yeshua. Long life is found in our Yeshua. Ang ganda ng pagkakamahada ng verse. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my... The last word of this verse is Yeshua. Salvation, meaning long life is found in our Yeshua. That you can see God that our, He is our El Elyon. He is the Most High. He is the Almighty. He is the Shaddai, the Jehovah, and the Elohim. But the name that gives you full and utter confidence is the name Jesus. Now, I want you to know this. Knowing God is powerful. Knowing God is powerful is good. But also, know that He wants to use that power to save you. Gusto ko malaman ninyo na tayong lahat dito ay pahabayin ng buhay ng Panginoon. At sasabihin mo, Lord, I'm so satisfied in your presence. At Panginoon, appreciate ko po ang inyong kapangyarihan. And Lord, naniniwala ko na ang kapangyarihan mo ay pwede kong gamitin. Na ang kapangyarihan mo ay ipararanas mo sa akin, Panginoon. Actually, naranasan ko na yun, Lord. Why? Because 
That's what our Lord Jesus did at the cross for you and me. He came and He showed us His salvation by sacrificing Himself on the cross for your sins. That He died young, that we may live long. Amen? That's why right now, maybe you're asking, as you stand on your feet right now, as you stand on your feet, Pastor, natatakot ako eh. Baka mawala yung salvation ko. Alam niyo, nung bata ako, lagi kong iniisip, kailangan maging banal ako lagi at maging perfect ako para hindi mawala yung salvation na binigay sa akin ng Panginoon ko. We're thinking that way. Na parang, Lord, if I made mistakes, if I will do bad things sa buhay ko, God, baka mawala yung salvation ko and that is tiring. But there was a confirmation of the Lord in Second Timothy. It says here, it says here, Second Timothy, uh, verse four, uh, chapter four, verse eighteen, and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and He will preserve me unto His heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. That is the promise of God in your life. Yes, we're making mistakes. Yes, sometimes we're committing sins. But the Bible said, the scripture said, Hey, God will preserve me unto His heavenly kingdom. The home be glory forever and ever. Amen. And right now, as we recognize the goodness and glory of God in this place. Why don't we sing song that the blessing of the Lord will be upon us today, tomorrow, and forevermore. Come on, let's sing this song. And a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children and the children your family and your children and the children and the children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in the coming and the going in your and rejoicing, He is for you, 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 He is for you. Your family and your children and the children. 